Hello again. I mentioned earlier today a statue in Nigeria which commemorates a slave trader. I'm sure that some viewers were as annoyed as I was uh, to see Winston Churchill's statue daubed with graffiti by a bunch of illiterate peasants during the Black Lives Matter disturbances a year ago. What puzzles me is that they did not notice the statue of a genuine racist and white supremacist standing in Parliament Square just a few yards from that of Churchill, whom they were condemning as a racist. I'm talking of an American politician who was a fervent supporter of segregation and whose ultimate aim was to deport all the black people in the United States and ship them back to Africa. This is what he said publicly on the subject. I am not, nor ever have been, in favour of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races, that I am not, nor ever have been, in favour of making voters or jurors of black people, nor of qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. And I will say in addition to this that there is a physical difference between the white and black races which I believe will forever forbid the two races living together on terms of social and political equality. And inasmuch as they cannot so live, while they do remain together, there must be the position of superior and inferior. And I, as much as any other man, am in favour of having the superior position assigned to the white race. Well, that seems pretty straightforward and unambiguous. The speaker is an avowed and unapologetic white supremacist who does not want anything to do with black people. That's why he's talking about white people having the superior position. He is a supremacist, a white supremacist. He was also a great supporter of the American Colonisation Society, a group set up with the backing of slave owners to send freed slaves back to Africa. A colony called Liberia was set up and free blacks were shipped across the Atlantic and the reason for this was that slave owners were worried that they might start agitating for an end to slavery in America and stirring up trouble, perhaps causing slave revolts. The name of this awful racist was, of course, Abraham Lincoln, and yet nobody touched his statue or painted on it. Ten times worse than Churchill, if you're going to be talking about racism. I give a reference or two in the description of this video so that viewers can check this for themselves. We must remember that even when people in the 18th and 19th century expressed strong disapproval of institutions like the slave trade and practices such as the lynching of black people, this did not by any means indicate that they rejected the underlying belief which permeated European and American society, that there were definite, real and inherent differences between black people and white, just as Indians and Chinese people belong to other races, each with their own characteristics. They may well have thought it wrong to be cruel to or mistreat black people, but that did not mean that these liberals of that time, by which I mean the late 18th and early 19th centuries, didn't mean that they thought black people to be as intelligent as white people, nor that they believed Indians or Chinese people capable of running their own countries in an efficient and humane fashion. When the subject of slavery crops up, we often hear the same names mentioned every time. Abraham Lincoln is one, and another is William Wilberforce. These are two of those whose work in ridding the world of slavery is surely worthy of note. In the case of both men, the popular perception is very far from being the correct one. Neither Wilberforce nor Lincoln were advocates of equality, and neither thought that black people, cultural differences apart, shared the same potential or were possessed of the same intellectual abilities as white people. Both men were, in other words, racists. It's true that William Wilberforce, as part of his devout Christian belief, thought that slavery was wrong, 
But that didn't mean that he felt that black people could run their own affairs or be freed wholesale without the outlook for such freed men, women and children being bleak and unpromising. In the late 18th century, Wilberforce and fellow members of his church, uh, they were known as the Clapham sect, helped found a colony in Africa which would be a refuge for former African slaves who had been repatriated to the continent from which they came. Even when the British government assumed nominal responsibility for Sierra Leone, as the colony was called, the Clapham sect was heavily involved in the running of the place. After the British abolition of the slave trade in 1807, the Royal Navy was active in intercepting ships in the Atlantic and if they were slavers, then returning the captives to Africa. Sierra Leone was a handy place to drop them because it was now run by the British and the Navy had a base there. William Wilberforce didn't think that freeing slaves all at once was a good idea because they wouldn't be able to cope with freedom. He said that he and his fellow Christians, and I quote, had always thought the slaves incapable of liberty at present, but hoped that by degrees a change might take place as a natural result of abolition. The slaves rescued, and I put the term in quotation marks here, by the Royal Navy, were actually sold into slavery again in Sierra Leone. The governor there paid the Navy a bounty for each slave they deposited at the capital, which was called Freetown. These people were then bound as apprentices, so-called, for 14 years. A little bit like the um, transportation to Australia, of course, it was taking place when people were condemned to spend seven or 14 years as virtual slaves in a penal colony. Any of the people who ran away in Sierra Leone after they had been bound there and uh, assigned to an employer were pursued, arrested and brought back to their masters. All this was sanctioned arranged and organised by William Wilberforce and the Clapham sect. The first crowned governor of Sierra Leone, Thomas Perronet Thompson, complained that Wilberforce and the Sierra Leone Company, which had founded the colony, had, by means of their agents, become slave traders themselves. William Wilberforce didn't think that black people were able to take care of themselves and run their own affairs which may come as something of a surprise to those who see him as an early anti-racist. There is a statue to Wilber William Wilberforce, a statue of him in Westminster Abbey, almost next door to the Houses of Parliament. Has anybody thought of toppling that? As a contemporary actually said, Wilberforce had become a slave trader himself. Is this a man to celebrate in Westminster Abbey? Wilberforce must fall, 